back with America's Forum as we go multimedia here today. We appreciate you watching Newsmax TV, joined by Newsmax TV contributor Francesca Page and Newsmax Magazine senior editor David Patton. Now, David, in the biz, we would call this a reveal. And uh, you have something to to show us today. Right, so this is going to be sort of a new feature on the program and what we're going to do is once a month when the new edition of Newsmax magazine sort of hits the turnstiles, we're going to go ahead and let the viewers here take a sort of preliminary look at the cover and talk a little bit about what's in the magazine coming up. Uh, this particular month is Ben Carson, Dr. Ben Carson, whom you've had on the program numerous times, I know. And this includes both an in-depth interview with Dr. Carson, as well as a fascinating excerpt from his hot new book, One Nation, that's coming out. And uh, Dr. Carson talks uh, to us about his ideas about how to sort of reform not only American policy, but also the political zeitgeist, the, the interaction that we have when we have our political dialogue so that it is one of unification as opposed to one of division that we've seen so well, much Well, let's of. talk more about that. In yeah. addition to that striking picture of Dr. Carson, yeah. you do have the article, and yeah. I saw the title on his uh, article, We Can Heal America. Right. So, uh, granted, you're not a medical professional, yeah. but you are a journalist. Yeah. Can you synopsize yeah. his uh, prescription for what we need? Well, it's very interesting. His theory, his belief is that it's no accident that you have Republicans and Democrats sort of at each other's throats all the time. That basically, when you look at the political elites, that they keep throwing out contentious issues in the most divisive way, trying to divide the body politic up into little bites and pieces that they can then assemble in coalitions that are dependent on their leadership and their policies in order to be able to get anything done if, in fact, they do get anything done. So it's sort of a roundabout way of catering to special interests and not addressing some of the most important problems that Americans have. How do we overcome that? Well, that's the key word, we. Dr. Carson believes that the American people, individuals, folks at home, have to put down the remote and, and get involved and look for opportunities to, to, to make a difference and also to not just look for the politically correct candidates, but to look for candidates who are speaking truth to power. Now, David, speaking of opportunity, what do you think of a about a potential Ben Carson presidential run? I think I've heard something about that somewhere along the way. I think I've heard that that's in the offing. Um, well, look, uh, it was very interesting that in the recent Republican leadership conference, Ted Cruz got a lot of the news headlines because he came in number one in terms of votes. Who would you like to see be the GOP nominee? But people don't realize he won like 30.3 to 29.4, which is what Dr. Ben Carson had. Phenomenal, within one percentage point of being the GOP favorite for the nomination. Now, historically, when we've taken a look at, uh, at political novices, the only people who've been able to do that in our history, you correct me if I'm wrong, were military heroes, generals. Uh, the founding of the Republic, mm. George Washington, mm -hmm. then U.S. Grant, and then, of course, in the wake of World War II, Dwight David Eisenhower. Now, biographers say, wait a minute, these guys had to be politicians to survive politically, but running for public office, and actually we can take Washington out of the equation because he was elected to the Virginia House of Burgesses. Mm -hmm. But Grant and Ike arguably were elective mm -hmm. political novices. Good point. From the other side of the aisle, you had, uh, you had Sam Rayburn, Mr. Sam, lamenting when Jack Kennedy was elected, all the so-called brain trust that came in, he said, well, they're smart and everything, but I wish a couple of them had run for county sheriff. In other words, mm -hmm. had elective political experience. Mm -hmm. Granted, Dr. Carson has great appeal, but going through the experience of campaigning for public office and being new to that, will that be the hurdle that he has to overcome? Or do you think he will decide that discretion is the better part of valor and stay out of presidential politics? So if you're going to ask me to make my projection, yes. here's what it's going to be, okay? I'm going to stick my neck out. I think Dr. Carson is going to throw his hat in the ring for the nomination. With the popularity that he has, 
and with the heartfelt message that he has, why would he not? Now, he's very sincere that uh, he's only going to do this if he feels called to do it. He's a tremendous uh, cr Christian man who's very motivated by his faith. So he's going to wait and see. He says if there's nobody else who he really feels confident can carry forward the cause of liberty, that, that then he will step in. I think he will. If he does, it's much more likely that he'll become sort of one of those symbolic candidates who has an opportunity to, to put a message through. That's the likelihood. But you can never count him out. Brilliant man, fascinating career as a pediatric, uh, pediatric neurosurgeon. And he would say the fact that he doesn't have a lot of political experience means he doesn't have a lot of political chits he has to pay back. And so therefore that he could come in as a fresh voice and really turn around the country. And maybe that's what the country needs. Now, there are some folks who have been in public office who may not be uh, a first choice or have, may not have received a lot of attention. We touched on this briefly yesterday, just kind of interested in, in going down this list, mm -hmm. getting your mm -hmm. assessment, uh, Dave Patton. First of all, the gentleman with whom I served in the House, he was chairman of the Budget Committee, first balanced budgets since uh, LBJ's term. This would be now the governor of Ohio, mm -hmm. who ironically was born in Pennsylvania to key states electorally, Governor John Kasich mm -hmm. of Ohio. Mm -hmm. What is your take on Governor Kasich? Do you expect him to perhaps get in this race? Terrific communicator. Spent a lot of time on cable television with his own show. Really knows how to communicate a message. Has a great record on balancing the budget, as you point out. Of course, he has to overcome or, or succeed with his gubernatorial challenge. He needs to win re-election. Uh, I think that that's likely he will do that. One challenge he would face in a GOP primary is, if I'm not mistaken, he was one of those governors who did expand Medicare in his state, which, as you know, is unpopular within the GOP. So w the Medicare-Medicaid expansion will be an issue that he would have to overcome in a GOP primary. Another Ohioan, another gentleman with whom I served in the House, now in the U.S. Senate, Rob Portman. Mm -hmm. Rob's name mentioned prominently for the number two spot Mm. on the ticket with Mitt Romney that went instead mm. to, to Paul Ryan. Mm. What's the book on Rob Portman? Well, brilliant man, uh, certainly very experienced in Washington, very well respected on both sides of the aisle, a genuine conservative, uh, but is he the kind of guy who's going to really rev up the base and motivate the base? That's been one of the knocks on him, that he's a little bit on the maybe bland side and not really somebody who revs up the crowd. So that's one of the issues he would have to overcome. One of my neighbors since I served in Arizona, my New Mexico neighbor, former Democrat, now Republican governor of New Mexico, Susana Martinez. Mm -hmm. Is she more likely for a number two spot on the ticket or do you think she'll mount a national campaign? If she does mount a national campaign, it'll basically be to show that she can do it, but probably more for the purpose of becoming a vice presidential nominee. In fact, I think you would probably say that she would be the odds on favorite if you had to just pick one as a tremendous choice for a vice president. A woman who would help counter the attacks on gender, a Latino would help counter the attacks uh, related to Hispanics and immigration. So really would be a fascinating choice. And by the way, anybody who saw her speech at the 2012 GOP convention, that is a lady who is articulate and can really get people motivated. I was very impressed. Now, David, we talked about, touched on this yesterday, actually, me and JD, but what are your thoughts on uh Jeb Bush. Well, uh, Jeb Bush is uh, liked by conservatives, particularly in Florida, who have seen him in action. But at the same time, let's be honest, he said some things recently that really give him some hurdles that he has to climb. Issues about immigration, coming in illegally, being an act of love, his strong support for Common Core, which is very uh, controversial within the yeah. GOP base. So we have to remember, we have to evaluate all of these candidates sort of in two ways. One, what's their chance of getting through the GOP primary? Two, what's their chance of appealing to independents in order to win the overall general election? I think Bush, Jeb Bush, would probably be the strongest GOP candidate if I had to pick one to accomplish that latter task. Can he, however, appeal to the GOP base as influenced as it is by the Tea Party in order to get the nomination? That's going to be his problem. And what about Rick Perry? Yeah, so Rick Perry is just a fascinating character, isn't he? Uh, seemed to be going so strong in that last election and then hurt himself with some really poor right. debate performances. They said he was under some medication, having some pain. Uh, what we see now as he kind of begins his reintroduction to the American people, 
is a politician who has a knack for reaching out to people. People tend to like him, whether they agree or disagree with his politics. I think you can never uh, underestimate the importance of likability in politics. I think he could have a, a bright future. Well, David, we appreciate what you think, uh, but we need to hear what you think. Who do you want to see run for president in 2016? Why don't you tweet us your choice and the reason why at Newsmax TV, hashtag America's Forum. There's also email, no stamp required, even though there was a hoax back in the day when I served in Congress about that. Connect at NewsmaxTV.com is our address. And let's not forget Facebook, y'all. Did I say faces? Our faces are coming right back.